we just started. Let's see the world of digital transformation and we'll see a lot of magic of combined first and second of four. So, whenever you are lost in thermodynamics, you should remember the Bible of thermodynamics. That's the only thing I remember in my life. U equals to Ds minus Pd. Only one thing I can remember. That's all. Nothing else to remember in thermodynamics. Only one thing. U minus Ds plus Pd. Ds plus Pd. Plus mu That's all. Nothing else you have to remember. And it suggests that U equals to you have this Pn. That's all. It says that so the combined first, second, and first law of thermodynamics. And U is the function of SV. So what I started last class is internal energy, entropy, whatever. Even you, you can say that AC equals to hat UVN. There's the entropy representation. Right? There's the entropy representation. The question is, we can measure temperature for this room. We can measure temperature and pressure. You can say atmospheric pressure. Temperature is right now 30 degree Kelvin, or 32 degree Kelvin, whatever. Uh, degree centigrade. 30 degree centigrade. Somebody asked me. How much is the internal energy now at the temperature 32 degree centigrade and pressure of atmosphere? I know internal energy is a function of entropy, volume and number of moles. So I will say I cannot measure. Yes, I can measure, but we have to but we have to see if you measure temperature, pressure, and number of moles, what you are actually getting directly. Will you be measuring directly internal energy? Of course not, we will be measuring something else. Quite. For that purpose, we will do something called Legendre transformation. The beauty of first combined first to second of thermodynamics is lying in this term. This is a beauty. Imagine that if this term is something like some other quantity, which is not maybe some something like some external extensive, uh, uh, so, uh, some uh, extensive property here and here. Then you cannot write that. These are two intensive property. And what are they? These are dou u by dou s at fix b as temperature, dou u by dou b at fix s is minus minus p minus pressure. That means what? If someone would like, would like to plot u, this is my independent variable, there are three independent variables, I am saying v and n constants, I can get this kind of work. Okay? I can get this type of work. And the slope is rho u by rho s at fix v n which is temperature. This I say M1. So M1. <laughs> As we discussed, if there is a graph whose equation is y equals to mx plus c. And here m is the intensive property, x is the extensive property. Here m is the intensive property. Intensive property. X is the extensive property. This may be extensive property. So, why is the function of X? And X is the extensive property we don't want. We want, why is the function of M? But if we represent y as a function of m, what actually happens? This has slope m. Okay? This has slope m. This has slope m. That means if I say this is m y, we'll get a curve, and that cannot be represent uniquely this one because this has fixed m, fixed c. These lines have the same m but different c. They cannot represent the same graph, what I have got. That means if I say y equals to y as is a function of m, that could be, we can write this as y equals to mx plus c1, y equals to mx plus c2, 
and so on. Infinite set of graphs you get and you cannot reproduce. That means instead of y as a function of x, if one would like to represent y as a function of m, one cannot do that. Because that cannot uniquely represent the same graph. It will be representing any of the parallel graphs. And for this graph, c and m both are fixed. That means if I have a graph, c versus m, if I have a particular point, that will represent this one. If I have a particular point, that will represent some other line. But this particular point has one-to-one -one correspondence. This has one-to-one -one correspondence. One-to-one -one correspondence. This has one-to-one -one correspondence. So we have what we have done. Instead of so our properties, if I want to express say m1 or so this I will say that this is my x1 variable, this is my x2 variable, this is my x3 variable. You can write m1, x2, x3. You can write x1, m2, x3. Or you can change both. What I am doing? I have three extensive variables. I am saying at a time I write as a function of temperature. So it will be the function of T, V and L. Am I correct? T, V, L. This is a function of S minus P, L. This is a function of just one hand please. This is a function of one hand. Please don't prompt. Yes sir. L. T, P, L. Minus P, T, P, L. So is this a function of T, V, L. This is the function of S, P, L. This is the function of T, P, L. The maximum combinations you can have. You can say, okay, I want to as a, have a particular function of measure of as a function of temperature. I want to have function of pressure. I want to have both function of temperature and pressure. So three ways you can actually have this permutation combinations. Right? A number of molecules, you know, number of moles you just, you just click see the number of moles you don't. We don't generally don't talk about number of moles. But this is the way. What I said, this will be C hat. This will be C hat. This will be C hat. What are my intercepts if I do that? It won't be internal energy anymore. If you have internal energy, that will not uniquely represent dv equals to tds minus pdv plus mu mu dl for the particular temperature and pressure. It could be something else. You cannot have expression directly as a function of temperature and pressure and number of molecules for internal energy. The C will be something else based on that. How to get C? This is the this can be done by the general transformation. This can be done by the general transformation. Okay. And we call C equals to C hat M1 to say MR and then XR to XN. Some variables were changing, some variables not changing. This entire transformation is called as the general transformation. This entire transformation is called as the general transformation. What we do actually? What is our objective? Initially we had this, right? We will get from here, by the legenda transformation, we will get what? We will get C as a C as say A1, X2, X3 and we will get an expression for DC like this which is something DM1 some plus or minus we don't know. Something dm2 and something dm2. So that will be the alternative representation of the combined first and second law thermodynamics in terms of general transformation. That's the objective. This will
know d go to ds minus p dv if it is a function you have to see here from there if, if, if you do if, if you perform regular transformation which is c equals c at m1 x to x3 and we can also uniquely have these things so when we have the measurable quantity like temperature pressure the combined first and second law of thermodynamics will take a different form and that's the philosophical perspective of combined first and second law of thermodynamics is it clear to all of you is that correct so let's take so we have seen that in the first and first and second law of thermodynamics our independent variables or extensive variables is not that easy to measure if you want to measure in terms of temperature pressure and number of molecules in that case what we actually get we we'll get we we'll get the alternative representation of the combined first and second law of thermodynamics let's see the procedure and we will learn more by following the procedure okay so if we i'm just talking very simple y equals to mx plus c for that and referring to that if you want to do your transformation what you what you are going to get you will get finally c equals to y minus x okay and if you want to write dc which is dy minus m dx minus x dm and dy equals to dy equals to m dx right dc equals to minus x dm and dc by dm which will say dc by dm equals to minus x you can see the slope in the cm plot is minus x the slope is the dy dx equals to m but for the linear transformation linear map when you have the c versus m graph the dc by dm minus x having said that if i have c was c as a function of n and dc by dm is minus x can you get back my original which is y hat x and dy dx equals to n of course it is yes we are going back to the normal this is called inverse regenerative transformation this is called as inverse regenerative transformation this is called as inverse regenerative transformation so we have this we got this from the transformation if you want to get back what is the original form this is the thing what we represent to it and that's called as inverse regenerative transformation so let's look at the uh, uh, overall comparison what is the general inverse regenerative transformation before possible further so legendal transformation and we have inverse transformation we call as inverse transformation that means inverse legendal transformation we have the three steps given relation given relation which is y equals to y hat x and inverse transformation what's the given relation from your side c equal to c can c hat c equals to c hat x okay number 2 derivative we know that n equals to dy dx and here it is dc dm equals to minus x and then number 3 is defined defining equation which is y equals to c equals to y minus mx we got what and y equals to c plus mx or you can say mx plus and that's all so from here finally you are getting c equals to c hat m and from here we are getting y equals to y hat x Beauty of this method is once you perform linear transformation, you get some function. Let's see, also see here, 
say x1, m2, x3. Whether the C function is correct or not, you perform inverse. Are you getting original function of internal energy? Yes, I am getting. My transformation is correct. That is the advantage. So, let me repeat once again. When you perform here transformation, you get C is at C hat x1, m2, x3. And question is whether the C hat function is correct or wrong. You perform inverse here transformation, you should get back the same. If you don't get back, proceed and check your calculations. Okay. So next, we have done only for one variable. We will go for the multiple variable. We will go for the multiple variables and we will call something like function of several, regional transformation for function of, uh, for several variables. Regional transformations. Regional transformation.
What is the same one? Rho y by rho x i for x j at fixed x j j not equals to y. Now go back to Euler's theorem. Go back to Euler's theorem. Just check whether it is consistent from Euler's theorem. I can write it because my y is a homogeneous function. I can write it, and you can see that that you got some expression which is du equal uh, u equals to ts minus pv plus mu n. Yes, what is t? Rho y by rho x i. And x i was s minus p is rho y by rho x two. X two is v, right? And other terms was there. That means that relation follows the linear relationship. That's why I can write. And this is not explained in any of the books in the market, including why you see now, Sam. So if you don't write it, you are gone. This is not explained anywhere. Any of the books in the market only explained to my notes. Okay. So that's why I can write this. Otherwise, there is a question: How can I write? I can write y equals to x plus c. And first of all, why should I write a linearized version? Somebody can complain. I can write m one x one square, m two x two square, m three x three square, or m one x two b four n, m two x two b four n. But since my y is a homogeneous function, and from the Euler's theorem, we have seen that. That's why you can write c equals to y minus summation in my exercise. Found that clear? Yes. Okay. So now, as I promised, uh, we had. From combined first and second law thermodynamics, we had U hat S B N and D U equals to E D S minus P D B plus U D N. So for this case, what will be my D C? D C from here. Now we have learned if we write like this, we cannot write D C from here. I need to have concrete expression like this. Since you now learn is a linear relationship, we can write this as d c equals to d y minus i equals to one to n m i d x i minus summation i equals to one to n x i d y, and we know that d y equals to summation m i d x i, right? This will get cancelled. We have proved it. We have proved it. Dy equals summation m i d x i is proved it. So we have d c minus i equals to one to n x i d m i. Okay. So that part is that part is clear. We got the d c expression. And c equals to c hat a one m two m three. So from here, what you can write? You can write d c equals to rho c rho a one m two m three d a one plus rho c rho a two a one m three d a two plus rho c rho a three a one m two d a three. That means. This will be my minus x one. This will be my minus x two. This will be minus x three. Am I clear? So x i equals to minus rho c by rho m i j uh, j not equals to y for n j. Sorry. Am I correct? This one is clear. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Clear. So we have uh, defining a given relation, and we have got uh, partial derivative. We have got uh, that x i. Everything is clear. And now from here we can do inverse linear digital transformation, and you can get the answer. Now something called what we have discussed uh, before. Well, we'll change partial is something, partial is not something. Like I will say, I will change this as m one, this x two and x three. So that won't be complete linear transformation. That will be partial linear transformation. Here is complete linear transformation. X one is going to m one, 
x to 24, x to 22. I will say I will change every time 1 or 2. That is called partial year transformation. What will be my expression? Special BC. Will it be same? Will it be same for the partial year transformation? Let's look at it. So we will now talk for the partial year transformation. What I am saying that if I have up to xn, I will do up to mr and then xr1 to x more generalized and that will be partial Legendre transformation. So first r variable I am changing to m1 and next r1, r plus 1 to n variables I am not changing. Next r plus 1 to n variables I am not changing. I am fixing it. Okay. So your objective is to from here you have to get you have to get here and you as usual your defining equation you can write. What's the uh, given relation? This is your given relation. This is your defining equation already given. And now the second part, which are called as partial delta. There are three points, right? Given equation, partial derivatives, defining equation. If you look at all <coughs> you have to calculate DC. Before that, what would be your expression for C? Y minus let's see how we can write the expression Y minus. No response from the class. Yes, sir. I equal to 1 to R. Summation I equals to 1 to R. Then X I G M. That's all. That's what we have discussed. This comes from minus theorem. We have shown that the linear relationship is valid. Okay. So now dy, if you take differential, dy minus summation i equals to 1 to r a my dxi minus summation i equals to 1 to r xi dma correct what is dy summation just i want hand place no problem yes last bench i equals to 1 to n a y dx, yes sir, you are very correct. Minus summation i equals to 1 to r m i dx i minus summation i equals to r x i d m r. What is my final expression of dc? Final expression of dc? For an expression of DC, there are only two terms. For an expression of DC, final expression of DC, just and please, yes, sir. Sigma summation i equals to r plus 1 to n mi dxi minus i equals to 1 to r xi dmr what will be xi? you need to have xi also no? for inverse transformation for inverse transformation what is the case? for inverse transformation you can write here inverse transformation first step we already have c hat m1 to mr x r plus 1 to x n partial derivative will be x i here right not m i what is my x i there are three steps you look at your table it is there you, you can check your answer book your, uh, your notebook it is there the three steps defining equation partial derivatives sorry given equation partial derivatives defining equation what are partial derivatives x i 
No idea. That means you are not following at all. I think I am just sweating out for nothing. I don't know. What do you all expect? Why I am teaching this much? Just please, one hand please. Yes. That's all? That is the way you are, you are, you talk mathematics. It doesn't make sense to me, it makes equal to me, it makes wrong. I cannot say Rosie by Doyen. Maybe the M does not exist here. Yes, sir. You are wrong. Do C by Do M I minus sign will be there. We don't care for that. M J J not equals to I and this will be valid for I equals to 1 to R. Only for R, R parts. Because why is the because C is the function of M1 to M R. X1, X2, X3 are not kept constant. They are not changing. You have to you have to treat that way. Okay? So do minus do C by do A minus. So it will be minus do C by do A minus. And it should be I equals to 1 to 1 to 1. And J is J not equals to 1. Okay? So when you have this C, Xi, and the third is you get Y, which is C plus summation i equals to 1 to 1. Am I correct? This is my inverse transformation, final step. Given equation, relation, partial derivative, define equation, and we are getting the original stuff. Okay? Let me keep the entire thing and start doing the example. Any questions so far before I proceed to the application of this concept? No, real transformation is over. Up to this real transformation, everything is over. Any confusion here? Please clear the confusion because I will now ask arbitrarily people the questions. Because if I don't ask, I won't know how many people are following it. Because I am sweating out and I am telling that you are so fortunate you are getting the best education here. Thermodynamics course in our country, nowhere it is taught in this way. We have a special thermodynamics course. If you don't learn it here, you cannot learn anywhere in this country. Okay. So I think everybody is clear. So I ask, I can, I can take liberty to ask any question to anybody, right? Am I correct? Yes. Only you are saying yes. Nobody else. So any questions, any doubts? I'm giving one more chance. Any questions, any doubts? The three things you need to remember: if given relation, partial derivative, defining equation. If you know that, you you get it. All of you got it? Yes. Yes. I think it is yes. Okay. Let me proceed. U equals to U hat S B L. Okay. My relation is given D U T B S minus P D B plus U D B. X1 equals to Second page. So, what are x1, what are x2, what are x3? Did you understand your transformation? I am asking you a question. Please don't waste my time because I have to cover very much. Just answer should be yes or no. So then why didn't you tell that? You think I am a fool, right? I am sorry for asking you a question. You, you please try to moderate yourself. Fourth page. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. X1 equals to? Yes. X2? X3? Yeah. I don't know whether you are eligible to stay in the class. You want to stay in the class or you want to get out? What's your roll number, sir? What? M019. MMT, right? The attendance is not given to us. Okay. M1, M2, M3. Last part one. Specs. Yes, sir. M1, M2, M3. Next. Yes. T. 
m2 what is that p or minus p p or minus p why minus is that's why minus p you didn't understand anything m3 what is that mu mu we don't need why because from here we are trying to get c hat s m2 n generally speaking when you are when you are changing the variable we have to be say from partial derivative concept i will say this is my x2 this is my x1 and this is m1 this is m2 because i'm changing this variable the variable which is being changed i should keep as number one in that case you can easily follow blindly the partial error transformation because i say that first r variables have been changed next r plus 1 to n variable have not been changed so only for this case only one variable has been changed so second and third variables have not been changed right right clear okay so finally we will come to defining equation before coming to dc i will come to dc further c equals to y minus Last step is what? Did you understand this part? What did we do? First, first r variable I am changing, and next r plus one n variable I am not changing. So when I change something, I will mark that as first variable. That means I have my objective is keep s intact. This x, these b variables corresponding n to s minus p, right? So I am getting c equals to c hat. S P N, or you can say minus P, no problem. So in that case, your X one will be V, right? This is equals to V. M two is equals to. Sorry, I am changing uh, X one M two X three. Okay, X one is what? Which which I am changing? X one to M one.
after that I didn't have any formal education of thermodynamics in postgraduate level. I didn't take thermodynamics in my postgraduate. That's why I think I have learned thermodynamics. And you are, I think I should not be able to teach, I should not be teaching, I should bypass things, you should be struggling, then only you can learn. Otherwise impossible. Why is what? U. M1 is what? P, minus P. X1 is? U plus PV, which is H. That's the derivation. Enthalpy. So H equals U plus PV. That's the derivation. That means if U equals to, you have S, V, N, and you are changing V to minus P, you get the C function as H, H hat, S, P, N, So enthalpy is a consequence of within that transformation. So from here, DC equals to what you look at? Madam. You look at the rod, everything is there. Look at the other half of the board. DC equals to dy. Minus. Dy. Okay. Madam, what for you are coming in the class, I don't know. If you don't understand, I am here. Maybe you treat me like a barking dog. It is there. Summation of I is equal to. Summation of I equals to. Uh, one. one is R plus 1 to L. I am just teaching like a kindergarten. Yeah, maybe that's why. Because I am doing all those things, that's what. I equals to 2 to 3. Did you understand? Please explain the brain. You have that. I am just begging for your brain. You understand that how much I am struggling to teach you. Okay, anyway, you'll be going outside and saying, my bad teacher, I don't care, but I am doing justice for my profession. MIDXI minus I equals to 1 to R, only one term, minus XI dy So far, everything is okay? M2 dx2, what is M2? D. dx2 is? TDS, first term, second term, second term, this is mu, right? Am I correct? And then, minus x i dmi, what is that? What is that? x i is what? Minus x1 dm1. Minus V So you got new expression dh equals to tds minus vdp plus mu dn plus yes. Because your m1 is minus p, so dm1 is d minus p, so it is plus. So you got the new expression. So what we got? I want to delete. Do you want me to keep this one or you want to delete? Me to delete. Shall I delete this one? No. Okay. So I have to work only in this part of the board. So let me find out. From here we got alternative expression of first law combined first construction of thermodynamics where dh equals to tds plus vdp plus mu dn how to remember this we can see that this s is not changing that means this term will be same this is flipping this sign also will flip this is not changing so that's why I only remember this one automatically I click the sign and remember this. So again it is proved that in thermodynamics only one relationship you have to remember which is d equals to t plus minus p d t plus mu d n. Nothing else. It comes automatically. Only thing you have to remember that h is coming <coughs> as a s p n only flipping that v p and immediately you can write that. Okay. So from here we can also write in terms of dh equals to tds plus vdp. How to prove it? 
from here. We have done it. And you can combine first and second lock. Just 